In this video, we're going to start looking at the rules of indices. Let's start off by taking a number. I'm going to choose the number 2, and I'm going to raise this to the power of 3. We would call 2 the base. So this is the base, and we would call 3 either the power, the exponent, so exponent, or we would call this the index. So when we're talking about the rules of indices, we're referring to the index or the power. I could write 2 to the power of 3 as 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2. So I've simply taken our base and I've written out 3 of them. If this was 2 to the power of 4, I would need another 2. 2 to the power of 5, another 2. If we evaluate this, we can write this now as 8. In this video, what we're going to do is look at the first two rules of indices, and they are for multiplication and division. So let's start off with multiplication. If I take a to the power of m and multiply it by a to the power of n, we have a to the power of m plus n. So if the bases are the same and we're multiplying, we add the powers. If we're dividing and we take a to the power of m and we divide it by a to the power of n, we subtract the powers and we can write this as a to the power of m minus n. So these are the first two laws and we can look at employing them now. So if we have, for example, 2 to the power of 3 and we multiply this now by 2 to the power of 5, Instead of writing all of this out, so we'd have 2 to the power of 3, and then we'd have 2 and 5 of them, we can simply go ahead and say that these bases are the same, so it's the same number, and we would simply write this now as 2 to the power of 3 plus 5, which of course gives us 2 to the power of 8. This saves us now writing all of this out. If we wanted to evaluate this, this is going to give us 200 and 56. You could check that on a calculator or if your powers of 2 are quite strong you'll find that that's 256. If I had 2 to the power of 7 and I divided this now by 2 to the power of 2 we are dividing so we're going to subtract. This would become now 2 to the power of 5 as we're doing 7 minus 2 and if we wanted, we could evaluate that, and that is going to give us 32. So 2 to the power of 5 is 32. You don't have to show this step, I've just done it for completeness. One key uh, error students make is that when they write 2 to the power of 3 multiplied by 2 to the power, they write that this is 4 to the power of 8. This is incorrect. When we're multiplying, the bases remain the same. What we're going to do now is look at some examples. They will get progressively harder, but all we need to do is simply use these rules. When we're multiplying and the bases are the same, we add the powers. When we're dividing and the bases are the same, we subtract the powers. So let's start off. Here we've got m to the power of 5 multiplied by m to the power of 2. So the bases are the same, we simply need to add the powers and that would be m to the power of 7. Here we've got m to the power of 4 multiplied by m to the power of minus 1. So 4 plus minus 1 is going to give us 3. So we'd have m to the power of 3 or m cubed. What we have now, if we look at this, is simply now some integer values in front of the m's. All we would do is multiply these. So 3 times by 2 is going to give me 6. Here we've got m. Often students initially forget that this is m to the first power. It's not 0. If it was 0, it would simply be 1, which we will look at in a later video. So 1 plus 5 is going to give me now 6m to the power of 6. 1 plus 5 is 6, so I'd write it like so. OK, let's look at this one. We've got now 5 times by 1 half times by 4. 5 times by 4 is 20, divided by 2 is 10. So multiplying the numbers, we're going to get 10. I've got m cubed, m to the power of 5, and m to the power of minus 2. 3 plus 5 is 8, 
minus 2. That, again, is going to give us m to the power of 6. So that one is 10m to the power of 6. We're asked to simplify the following. For me, this is in a nice particular form, but all we're going to do now is expand it out. So m to the power of 3 multiplied by 1 is just going to be m to the power of 3. Then we're going to subtract away m to the power of 3 multiplied by m to the power of 4. We add the powers, so this is going to give us m to the power of 7. We're now moving on to division. m to the power of 5 divided by m to the power of 3, we subtract the powers. This is going to give us now m to the power of 2, or m squared. Here we've got 6 and 3. 6 divided by 3 is going to give us 2. We've got m to the power of 1. So let's just write our little 1 here. Remember, this is not a 0. So we've got m to the power of 1 divided by m to the power of 3. So we need to subtract the powers. And that is going to give us m to the power of minus 2. In a later video, we will see that this can be written as 2 multiplied by 1 over m squared, or if you like, this can be written as 2 over m squared. So we'll look at this in a later video, but for now, uh, we'll leave it as 2m to the minus 2, which is perfectly fine. You might have seen this written as 6m divided by 3m cubed. Exactly the same, it's just different notation, a division sign of a division bar. So here we've got the division bar, 8 over 4 is going to be 2. Then we've got now m to the 5th divided by m to the 4th. We need to subtract the powers, so that will be m to the power of 1, which of course we would just write now as 2m. Okay, with this one now, we've got something slightly more challenging. Here we've got now a numerator and a denominator. I'm going to do the numerator first, and then I'm going to do the denominator. You can cancel these uh, values, these integer values as you go, or if you like, you can just write 9 times by 6, and then ultimately we'll divide by 3. Personally, I would cancel the 9 and the 3 down to 3 and 1, but I'll do this one step by step. So what we're going to have then in the numerator is 54, that's 9 times by 6. We've got m to the power of 5 multiplied by m, which is going to give us m to the power of 6. Now we're going to divide by 3, lots of m to the power of minus 2. So 54 over the 3 is going to give us 18. Alternatively, you might have already just had 3 times 6. Entirely up to you. So we'd have 18 in the numerator. We've got now m to the power of 6 divided by m to the minus 2. So what we're going to do is 6, and we're going to subtract the negative 2. That is going to give us now m to the power of 8. So this is in its simplest form, 18m to the power of 8. This one here, uh, we could use a law that we might see later. What I'm going to do is avoid that for now and just use basic multiplication of the brackets. So what we're going to have then is m cubed, and we're going to multiply this if I square this bracket, we're going to have negative 6 times by negative 6 is positive 36. m times by m is m squared. So what we've got now is 36. We're multiplying, so we're going to add the powers. So that becomes m to the power of 5. In another video, we will look at a rule that involves this right here. And if you want, that is a to the power of m raised to the power of n is a to the power of m multiplied by n. So if we're raising to a power, we multiply the two. All I've done is standard uh, double bracket, if you wish, multiplying the two, as we've got now a very small integer value to deal with. So that is it in terms of multiplication and division. So if the bases are the same, we multiply and we add the powers. If we're dividing, we subtract the powers when the base is the same. So, for example, now, if we had 3 to the power of 5 multiplied by 4 to the power of 2, this would not 
equal 12 to the power of 7. What we would need, for example, to employ this rule is 3 to the power of 5 multiplied by 3 to the power of 2, which would give us 3 to the power of 7. With some values, you can manipulate them using powers. So, for example, if this was 8 and this was 4, they're both, both now multiples of 2. We could manipulate them, but in general, we would simply only use the multiplication and division laws when the bases were the same or we could manipulate them to make them the same.